Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us at Founders for Schools and Maths for Girls. Happy International Women's Day and happy National Careers Week. Thank you for joining us on this great day of celebration. We're bringing you this all day and this session this morning is some speakers who are going to share their career insights and inspiration about what they do, uh, how they got there and the difference that it makes, giving you excellent career information to help you make your own decisions about your future. So uh, this is being recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel, but your cameras and microphones are off. Please do use the chat function to ask all of your questions and we'll put them to the speakers on your behalf. So please Please do use the chat and if you can please say um, which school you're from and say hello and uh, we'd love to know as well who your inspirational woman is on, uh, on this International Women's Day. So well, without any further delay I'm going to introduce you to our two speakers who are going to talk to us about their job and what they do and how they got there. So good morning Ian Tika. Good morning, Louise. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and it, it, it's incredible that, you know, sort of your schools are organising these events um, to actually get an idea of what, you know, the world of work looks like and how you can use maths in the future um, and, and definitely make the most of these opportunities. They're super useful. So my name is Ayantika Mitra and I am Director of Business Strategy at a company called Sci6. So what does Stysix do? If you look at this metal tube, it weighs about as much as a packet of crisps. That's 36 grams, but it will carry the weight of an African elephant or two Indian elephants. There is no other material in the world quite like it. And using this material, instead of say steel, which is currently used on aircraft, in, in the aircraft landing gear, could save over 3.7 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions a year. So really what we're trying to do is use this advanced materials technology, which is made entirely in the UK, engineered in the UK, and use it to make um, aircraft and electric vehicles lighter so we all use less CO2 emissions. And now that's really important because with climate change and, and this crisis that we all have to find solutions to, it's really important that every different parts of the industry do their bit. So um, I guess um, what, one of the questions we, we get asked is, you know, what, what's the most exciting part of your job? Um, I guess I've become, from having a maths background, I've become an engineer. And to me, the most exciting part is that we get to develop these new solutions um, to, to, to you know, pr problems that exist, but no one's come up with this. So while Stysix is a small business, we're about 20 people, um, what we're doing is, is cutting edge and, and there's no one else in the world with this capability. So I find that really, really um, exciting. Now, in terms of maths, it's, w when I was studying maths at GCSEs and A-level, I thought, OK, it's, it's interesting. I really I loved maths. I really enjoyed it. But I thought I'm probably not going to need this, you know, to, to this level again. And I would say it turns out that in my job, in my day to day job, I use probably 80 to 90 percent of the maths that I learned in A level and in GCSE, which and, and I'm almost so grateful to my younger self who took the time to actually study maths properly and try to learn it and understand it. So things like a couple of weeks ago, um, randomly had to try and calculate the length of an arc and try and work out geometry to do with, you know, how do you, from this radii to that radii, how do you calculate the length? So you will end up using maths in completely new and bizarre ways that you really didn't expect. Um, I had to actually go back and look at my GCSE maths textbook <laughs> to find the, the formula for the length of an arc, but that was really useful. And, and knowing that you have those resources you can sort of fall back on, um, it's also really useful. In terms of what I use maths for uh, elsewhere in my job, 
So a lot of what I do is developing um, digital manufacturing systems. Now that means that that's a lot of programming, that's a lot of writing algorithms and code, but really that's just logic. So, and, and that's one of the things that maths teaches you. It teaches you how to structure your code and your logic and, and really help you sort of, you know, consider that as a career as well. Um, in other ways that I use maths, I guess uh, I, I work on the financial side of things within the business and obviously everything from percentages to sort of interest and calculating these things are really important. And I, I cannot state how much you know, we, we use as, as engineers, as, you know, as entrepreneurs and in running a small business, you use maths absolutely every day. Um, I guess the other thing I wanted to cover is, you know, w one of these um, preconceptions we have, I think a lot of people have, is that, you know, boys are better than girls at maths. But it's, it's one of those things where it is it really couldn't be so far from the truth. Myself and my experience of maths, I wasn't always um, the A student. I, I didn't always get it as quickly as I could see my classmates sort of just understood it and it clicked. But I guess for me, um, because I stuck at it and it was a bit more persistent, um, I started to find that actually by using it more, by practicing it more, it's almost like a language. If you, the more you uh, talk in maths and the more you talk in maths with other people, you actually become more fluent at it. So for me, whilst I wasn't the best math student in the class, I really found that by practicing more, I just got better at it and I actually enjoyed it more. So I would say my number one, I guess, tip would be to actually, you know, stick at it. It, it, it can be a really interesting subject and whilst other people might be quicker and better to you than you. It really doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I, I, I absolutely, I, I can't stress how much um, I actually loved maths and science um, growing up. And I, I guess I've been fortunate to be able to make um, a career out of it. Thank you. That that's a wonderful insight, and you you've made a career out of it. But you also make a difference. I just want to go back to something you said at the start and check. Is that 3.7 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year that your yeah. work could help to save? Yeah, absolutely. We, which phenomenal. is why we do it. It's it's you know we, we know that we need to use. Earth's resources are finite, so we need to use it a lot more efficiently and, and that that's a large part of what we're trying to. Yes, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you. And um, can I ask before we move on to Catherine from Tate and Lyle, can I ask you um, what, what your favourite part of your job is? So if you think about your job on a day to day, what do you love? What gets you up in the morning? It, it really is that Cut, be, being at the cutting edge, I think, and knowing, I think more than anything else, it's knowing that we're building something. So it's not that, you know, we, we're sort of um, just, just, you know, shifting paper or so, sometimes you have to do a lot of paperwork and it's boring, but no one wants to do it. But I think the, the great thing about sort of working in engineering or manufacturing, we get to build things, physically build things. So whilst we have the small tube, we have other parts which are two meters long. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess for me, that's really exciting. Yeah, it, so, it sounds amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that insight. I'm going to go to Catherine now, who's going to tell us all about her role with Tate and Lyle. Hi everyone, my name is Catherine Fish and I do work at Tate and Lyle um, as a senior group accountant. Uh, for those that don't know, Tate and Lyle is a global provider of ingredients and solutions for the food and beverage uh, industries. So basically, what does that mean? The company helps manufacturers of food to deliver on sweetness or sugar reduction, um, textures, so the way things feel in your mouth, fiber enrichment and stabilization, basically to create healthier products that are enjoyed by millions of people every day. You might be wondering, what does a senior group accountant actually do? Uh, one of my key tasks is making sure that we produce accurate financial information um, in the annual report and financial statements that are published externally. So I know when I was probably 11 or so, I had absolutely no idea what financial statements were. 
Um, so I'm going to give a very basic example um, to hopefully put that into perspective. It might be a bit too basic, but there you go. Um, let's say you found a product that you really liked and you knew that none of your friends had and you purchased it for £10. And let's say you took that home and you decided, Meh, maybe someone, one of my friends might actually want it and they're going to give you £20 for it. So you've made a £10 profit and you've put that money into the bank. So all the financial statements are, is recording those transactions. So you've got money that you've received, uh, you've made a profit, and you've got assets in the cash that you've put into the bank. So you might be thinking, well, why does anyone care? <laughs> why is that important? Um, internally, like for yourself, you want, you're not gonna sell it to someone else for less than what you purchased it, right? You want to keep that money for yourself. You want to know that you got more money back, that you can buy something more expensive. Um, externally, let's say if we continue with that example, you really like that product, you believe in it, you think you can sell so much more of it. You might want to get an investor or someone else to help you sell more of it. Or you might want to borrow some money from someone, maybe your parents anyone, they're going to be interested in those financial statements. They want to know, are they going to get anything back on their investment? They're not going to want to do it for free, right? <laughs> um, so I guess that's the key reason why we look at the financial statements and why they're produced. Um, and investors or lenders, they want to be able to compare different companies' financial statements, right? So the financial statements are all prepared generally on the same accounting guidance principles, um, certain rules, I guess, within that, which we apply our maths to and our logical reasoning to try and interpret what they actually mean and what they want so that people can make decisions between different companies, what they want to invest in, what they're gonna get out of it. Uh, so I guess you might be wondering, how did, I, how did I get into this career? How did I decide to go down this financial reporting route? Um, like anyone in secondary school, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do in the long term. Um, but pretty soon I had to pick school subjects that were going to lead me down that path. And there were a wide variety of different subjects, right? Whether it was English, science, math, art, art history, so many. Um, and for me, I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So it is really difficult, isn't it? Um, I'll admit my parents talked to me about finance and business and said, you know, there are a lot of job opportunities in those fields. You might want to try something like that. So I looked into, well, what would it take to be a qualified accountant? What path would I need to follow in order to achieve that end goal? And then I worked backwards. So in order to qualify or to get into a chartered accountancy qualification, um, if you haven't realised, I'm not from the UK, I'm from New Zealand, so I'm going to talk to my experience, but I believe that in the UK it is a lot quicker, so it is worth looking into, hopefully things can be achieved faster, um, but at the time, in order to qualify for a Chartered Accountancy degree in New Zealand, I had to have a four-year university degree in business, um, taking the relevant papers throughout that course in order to qualify for that. And then stepping back, what did I need to get into university? I needed to do especially maths and English. So I believe I took a calculus course to learn all the things that I needed to learn. Um, but on reflection, I mean, these are core subjects. They're a, a foundation that lay the base for any opportunity that you have going into the future. So I would say that that really set me up um, for any path that I wanted to take, what, depending on what I wanted to apply for once I got into university. So I would really suggest ensure you do well in your core subjects and your foundation subjects that are going to help you learn different ways to think logically or with reasoning to be able to identify what the problem actually is and how do I actually come up with a solution. And maths is certainly going to help with that. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You said um, that your role is interpreting what these figures and spreadsheets 
um, what they mean mm -hmm. so people can make decisions. That's yeah. a really great thing to be able to help people to do. So what kind of decisions could they be that people make? So from, I guess, an outside perspective, they might be looking at this company and say, how profitable are they? Um, they might look at other aspects like how are they achieving um, their profits? Are they doing it in an ethical, moral way? Um, investors invest for lots of different reasons, whether it's sustainability or purely profit making. Are they going to get nice dividends at the end of it? Um, I think those are the key decisions that investors are going to make. Internally, we're going to make lots of decisions of is this product more profitable than another one? Do we need to invest in manufacturing in this area rather than that one? Um, so there, there's lots of decisions that can be made um, depending on that financial information. It's going to give you insight to make the best decision to have the best outcome. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. And um, what is a, is there such a thing as a normal day in your job day to day? What, what might your day look like? Um, yeah, uh, typically. I guess any job, I don't know, ours starts around 9am and I would generally clear down all my emails, look at what the priorities are, uh, catch up with our team, see how everyone's going, are we all working towards the same goals, um, the same deadlines, the same times so that we're going to meet those um, and meet what our bosses want done when. Um, a lot of it can be like if there's a month end uh, reporting on the numbers. There's going to be outputs that we need to look at and work that needs to be reviewed. If something's not quite right, things that need to be corrected. Uh, so I'd say that's probably my day to day. OK, thank you. So you mentioned working with a team. You don't work just mm -hmm. by yourself all the time. Do you sometimes work in a team? Uh, yes, so um, I work in our group reporting or group finance function. So there's probably about five to seven of us. Um, that work on different aspects of the financial statements, looking at different things, whether that's our cash flow or our reporting. I mean, Tent Lyle is a, a huge company with um, companies all over the world. So, um, yeah, it's quite interactive with people in our shared service centre in Poland and also those that we work with here in the UK. Oh, wow. Wow, thank you. And uh, Ayan CK, you mentioned your team is about 20 people. Um, in what ways do you work together? Well, the team of 20, they split across lots of different types of jobs. So we have, for example, a manufacturing workshop where they uh, machine metal, so they cut metal and turn it into these amazing products. We have a design team who actually who spend a lot of their time on the computer and it's designing, you know, it, it's working out what are the stresses, what are the strains that this aircraft component is going to have to you know, tolerate. So it's, it's a really important, really sort of critical to our um, process. And then we have lots of different, so we have the finance function again, as, as Catherine talked about, and that is so critical to a business because if you can't get that right, you don't have a business, you don't have a product. So that is absolutely so critical. And so, so we have, we also have a quality manager who looks after, you know, are we following the right procedures? And it's really important because in manufacturing, you want to be sure that, you know, you produce something consistently. It's not that, you know, it was 10 millimeters long one day and then 12 the next. Um, so we have lots of different functions and it, it's great because because we're a small business, you get to have, you know, go around and chat to everyone sort of and, and see where the different uh, teams and, and how they're doing. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Now, um, you've both talked about the maths that you use in your job now. Uh, people watching may at the moment be um, preparing for assessments and exams and um, and that could be quite stressful and you're by yourself and you have a limited amount of time to figure out the answer but it sounds like so I Antika, you said you went you went away and you had a look at a book and you had to think about it and you came back and worked on it Catherine you said that there are different people working on different parts of a project so um, I think I'd like to know is it is does it feel the same as sitting in that assessment environment when you're using the maths Yeah, in some ways it definitely does. Um, there's usually, you know, at the end of a test, there's always one right answer. 
Um, it can be a bit of a gray area in accounting, depending on how you interpret, I guess, the question or the problem. And lots of people have different opinions, right? So there can be different ways to do things and to get to a different solution. And you may not always agree, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong, I guess, in <laughs> accounting speak. Yes. Um, but it's all down to interpretation. So. Wow. Yes. So, so you need to produce an answer. However, being open to interpretation, that's, that's quite different to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. I Antika. I guess one of the things that I realized was whilst I wasn't a huge fan of tests and, and assessments, um, you, you realize that being put under that pressure and almost having to sort of perform under pressure for a fixed period of time. It, it's not that, you know, your, your entire school experience is like that. But I think it's important to have that experience because even in your job, there will be times when there is a lot of pressure and there's a very tight deadline, which which is not going to move. And I, and I would almost make the exam that tight deadline that's not going to move. Um, and it's it, it's important to, to almost have that ability to stay calm and stay focused. And OK, it's fine if, if I can't do this, but which are the bits I'm going to focus on, which are the bits that either are going to get me you know, the, the better marks. I, I don't know this, but I do know this. So I'm going to tackle this part. And it almost helps. You'd almost have a parallel experience at work where you have that tight dead, deadline. You'll know, OK, I can tackle this. I can't tackle this. I'll either you know talk to a team member about the bits that I can't do. But again, you will almost go through a similar process. Now, that's not all of your you know, uh, experience at, at a job, but there will be times when it does get somewhat stressful and there are deadlines that you have to meet. Okay, right. So that is, it's really, so these assessments and exams are really good practice for lots of situations in work. But has there been a time when, uh, and Iantika, you just kind of mentioned it a little bit there, where you haven't known what to do or what the answer is, where do you go for help? I guess my first port of call would, would have been sort of, you know, books. I, I was a bit of a bookworm. Uh, but but again, if, if you're not sure, ask. And and I think one of the big things that people think that, oh, you know, it'll make me look silly. It'll make me look like I didn't understand something that's really obvious. And sometimes, you know, you almost, um, I, I've noticed a lot of people sort of don't, you know, raise their hand and just assume that everyone else in the classroom has understood, you know, what's being talked about, but they, they're the one person who just hasn't got it and you feel silly. And I think that there, there is no such thing in learning as as a stupid question. It is, you know, raise your hand, ask, because probably what's happening is that the other people around you as well don't have a clue, but they're just being shy and and they, they, they didn't want to. So you're actually doing everyone else a favor. So I think one of the things where if you don't know something, it's OK to say, I don't know. And and a big part of what I felt helped me through my career and, and still helps me is the fact that I say, look, I'm learning every day. I don't know. I, I, I pretty much assume that I know nothing. And, and I've, you know, talked to people, find out, you know, their experience, find out, you know, sort of learn from people. So I would say just, just ask. Just ask. That's really good. And it's great to know that, um, you know, you don't, you don't finish your GCSEs and then you know everything that you have to know. I think we're, we're all always learning. What would you say to that, Catherine? I completely agree. Um, because it's like I said, if you don't know, you're interpreting, you're trying, right, to figure out what do they actually want. And you could be going down the complete wrong path. So if you have the opportunity, definitely ask, because you're only going to learn from it, learn how people think about or interpret that question or problem, um, and then be able to apply that in the future. Oh, great. Thank you. And have you, do you do that in your work or was there a time where you thought, I really don't know and I need some help? Definitely. There's always been projects or things that I haven't done before that I've not worked on, which often can involve a lot of collaboration with other people and knowing to ask the right questions in the first place to get the right results. And it's really important to have people that you can go to or get support from or resources online as to the process um, and to utilise that so that you can achieve the best that you can. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. So the theme of uh, this event this morning was where can maths take you? So I'm going to ask you both, what would you say to the audience who are watching at home or at school if they're thinking that um, maths might be for them? 
what would you say to them? Because we've got two very different examples of where maths has taken you. So at INTK, what would you say to somebody who's considering it? Gosh, I, I would say maths is like really a toolbox. And once you have that skill set, it it really just opens up the world. And and I guess I'm trying to say I'm not saying this because I'm biased and I and I really love maths. It really opens up so many options for the future. Um, f for me personally, uh, I didn't um, I didn't know what I wanted to do even whilst I was at university. So I tried lots of different jobs. Um, so I tried working in banking, in management consulting, but because I'd studied maths, it gave me those options. If I had done something else, I think I would have had fewer options. So for me. Because I studied maths, I could consider, you know, lots of different careers and absolutely everything and change careers because that's what I also did. So I think the fantastic thing is because it's a foundational sort of skill set, as Catherine said, um, it opens up to whatever you want to do and whatever drives you and, you know, makes you sort of, you know, whatever you're passionate about. And I think it, it's just that great foundation. So um, definitely make the most of it. OK, thank you. Thank you. And Catherine, what would you say to somebody who is thinking that they, they might uh, want to study maths after after um, after their GCSEs or to have a job that involves maths? What would you say to them? I'd say Antigua's definitely taken the words out of my mouth. <laughs> it is such a core foundation subject um, that teaches you different ways to think about things um, that can be applied to anything. So it's it's keeping your options open, I think. Study maths is going to take you almost anywhere you want to go. You can apply it to almost any situation. Um, and it's not just about the numbers, it's also about logical thinking, right? How can I actually solve the problem? How can I interpret the problem? Um, it's going to put you in a good place for any career path that you want to take going forward. So do well, try. Um, set yourself up with that good foundation for the future. Oh, that's fantastic insight uh, and advice. Thank you. So you've both talked to us about very different career paths and but how you use maths in them and how you use maths in your day to day job, how you got there and how it can literally take you around the world uh, should you like to. So I'm going to finish with a huge thank you to our speakers today for volunteering their time and giving us such amazing insights and a huge thank you to you, the audience, for taking part in this and sparing the time to find out about your potential future career options. So thank you. Thanks for joining us and we hope to see you again.